This video is going to be a behind the scenes look at and a bit of a breakdown of how I just shot my latest horror short film for Halloween called A Quiet Night. So I'm just going to quickly walk through everything from the lighting to the camera to the lenses to the setup and anything else I could possibly think of to show you how I went about filming this short film in only a few hours on a Saturday night. So let's get to it. It's BTS time. Woo! It's BTS time. <laughs> So first things first, we're gonna go over the concept. It's a bit of a home intruder slash stalker type story. So it's basically a girl who's coming home from either work or maybe from her boyfriend's house. And when she arrives at home, she doesn't really notice this, but there's somebody outside who is stalking her and who is gonna break into her home and going to terrorize her and maybe attack her. So very simple concept. It's gonna be quite basic, it's not very long, but that is kind of the gist of what the story is all about. So one of the first things I'm gonna go over is you know what, I'm gonna put this camera down because it is actually quite heavy to do this whole vlog type thing on my FX3. I'm gonna set this down right over here. Okay, I think I'm good enough. So after hearing about the gist of the story, that means we're gonna break this whole thing down into a couple different settings. So the first one is gonna be outside in the car. The next one is gonna be outside at the front door. Then it's gonna be inside the main entrance hallway as the girl comes inside. Then there's going to be a shot in the main hallway on the main floor over here that she will be walking down to get a hair tie as she's going to walk back around and go to sit down on the couch while she's tying up her hair. But while this is happening, the intruder has already come into the home, leaning up against the wall and he's kind of waiting for the right moment to strike. So the final set piece here is all going to be in the living room over here on the couch where the final gist of the action is going to take place. So there's a little bit we have to figure out here for logistics on how we're gonna light it and how we're gonna shoot this. So let's jump right on into the gear that we use to shoot this film. Just a little bit of a change of the corner over here for a minute. We shot this whole short film on the Sony FX3 camera with the SLR match micro prime cine lenses. I did use the 35 millimeter lens for I believe the whole thing. I was considering using a wider angle lens but I didn't end up using that. So I did use 35 for pretty much everything. There you go, that's this guy right over here. One of my absolute favorite lenses, 35 millimeter from SLR Magic. So that was quite easy to use this to get a lot of the exterior shots outside and pretty much everything else for that matter. Um, the one thing that I wish I did use was my 21 millimeter lens, which is what I'm actually filming this video on right now. I wish I used that when I was in the car because it's a tighter space and a wider angle lens would have been better in there, but it was quite late. And we were on hour four of working on this when I told my beautiful wife that it would have been only two hours. Yeah. All this work is like hours. I think it took us like four or five hours. I told my beautiful wife it would only be two, two hours, but it's mm -hmm. not. Things always take longer than you think. So I wasn't exactly thinking that I should have swapped my lenses. I was worried about lighting. I was worried about it being late. I was worried about the neighbors seeing me wearing a scary, creepy mask outside. So creepy. <laughs> no. Is it kissy? No. Is it kissy? That's so creepy. creepy. <laughs> I don't like it. No. Oh my God. Stop. <laughs> don't. Don't do that. So I was just trying to get things done as quickly as I could. So that is probably the one spot that I wish I would have done something a little bit differently. But nonetheless. I'm still pretty happy with how those shots turned out. So it worked out with the 35, I'd say. Before we jump on over to lighting, there actually is another little piece of equipment, if you want to call it that, uh, that I did use for one of the shots here. That is a filter that goes on the lenses. Let me just, hold on. It's this guy right over here. You can see that kind of magnifies a little bit. So this is a split diopter and it basically goes on here. But why don't I jump on over to uh, our behind the scenes when I was filming to tell you a little bit more about this. Don't mind my hair. We are taking a little bit of a break because my actress is getting hungry. So she's uh, making popcorn. But we're switching gears here now because I think we got I think all of the other main footage that we need to on the main couch set, I believe, right? Yeah. So now we're setting up the new shot, which is gonna be the cool one, the split diopter one. If I turn this on for a minute, with the whole split diopter, the key is to look at the monitor here. We want the area back there to be in focus where the girl will be walking. 
And then as the intruder has his back up against here, you want to see him in focus as well. So using a split diopter is a really easy way of doing that. So, so I don't know if you can make that out at all. No idea if that's in focus, but that's a split diopter. So it's got a piece of glass covering half of this filter here. The other half is just empty. So that's what's going to be my deep focus. And what's behind the glass is going to be the close focus, which will be up against the wall there. So let's see how this turns out. We're going to attach this thing. I did do a test shot. I did see that it works. So again, we're going to hope for the best now under these actual lighting conditions. Let's see. So we're recording on all fronts. Now I got to get myself and yeah, a nice focus. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the lighting. So again, there were a couple different spots, a couple different scenes to this whole thing. So the lighting did change throughout depending on what we were filming, but I did use a similar lighting style to film the whole thing because I obviously wanted a cohesive look to the whole short film. So a couple of lights I started off with are these Godox TL30, I believe they're called, tube lights. Actually got a couple of them right over here. So they basically, they're magnetic and they stick together. There we go. I basically used a kind of green tealy tinted one as well as this warm orange amber type color uh, when I was outside. So I wanted to kind of replicate street lights. And a lot of street lights, especially older ones, have that kind of orangey glow to it, as well as that whole like sodium vapor look, which some of them kind of have that whole greeny, tealy type look to it, which is kind of sickly looking almost, but sometimes you can find the, you know, both of them on the same street. Um, and they use different colored lights sometimes. So I just kind of wanted to have a little bit of that color contrast. So I lit outside the car with these guys over here. So I basically attached these to my C-stands, just kind of going out like this, and I placed them going kind of higher up, one on each side of the car, creating a bit of that whole color contrast to be able to light the scene for when Kristen was in the car. Um, not so much driving, because there was a lot of actual ambient street light, as well as lights from the houses on our street over here that were on. So there was quite a bit of light out there. So I didn't really, you know, do a fancy rig or anything to rig up a light to have it following with a car or anything. It was just pretty much waiting in the driveway for uh, when the car pulled in and, and pulled up. Now that did present a few challenges because I didn't want to get the light stands or the lights in the shot. And my original plan for the opening was to have the camera from the back seat looking forward in the car the whole time she was driving. But as I quickly saw, the light stands as well as the lights were fully in the shot. I had to get creative, change up the angles, and I'm actually glad I did because I like it better having multi angles and switching things up a little bit. So I just have to get creative and find the right angles for different spots to make sure the lights uh, and the stands weren't in the shots. After the parts with the car were done, I actually moved my C stands over to be right at my front door because the next scene was Kristen walking into the house in the front door and the camera was inside, but you do see the street out from within the house. So I wanted to make sure that whole orange and green glow was still coming into the home to just kind of create once again that whole interesting lighting setup there instead of being just a very basic and boring shot. So I made sure I brought them nice and close, which did present some of its own challenges. Okay, so the next set of tube lights I have right here, it's hard to kind of see them like the, as is, but it's got a bit of a blue tint to it. So I wanted this to kind of be replicating almost like a nighttime type look. You know, in film, uh, blue is typically a color that represents moonlight or nighttime. And as silly as it might seem, you'll probably notice as you watch a lot of movies and TV shows that they do use blue tinted light a lot of the time for interior nighttime scenes. So I wanted to have a little bit of a blue accent light that's kind of spilled onto the wall back here. Spilled onto a little bit of the couch that was in front of me here, as well as to rim Kristen's camera right side while she's sitting on the couch, as well as when the intruder is walking back here and going behind Kristen to menacingly stare at her and ultimately attack her, maybe? I don't know if that's what happened. We'll see when you watch the film. And the second light that was just a bit of an accent light here to put a little more interest for the background of the scene here was the Golden Eagle LED 3000. Now this could have been absolutely any light, but I did attach ambit fill focalized condenser on there, which you would have seen in a previous video of mine. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out 
this little card up here to go see more about that. But basically it allows me to put in these little cookies and gobos that creates patterns with the light. So I put a bit of a window pane cookie in there to create the effect that like window is spilling through uh, the window from outside. So that's what's creating this little bit of extra light on the back wall over there. Finally, let's move on to our main key light before we jump on over to the next topic. Okay, so this right here was my main key light for the main couch scene over here. And that is, I, I don't even know what I'm using over here anymore, guys. All right, that is the Small Rig RC120B. And it is a light that can change color temperatures. So you can go from all the way warm to all the way cool. So this is absolutely fantastic. So I rigged it up on a C-stand to be kind of hanging down overhead like this. And I attached this lantern softbox attachment on here to kind of create a more rounded soft look to kind of fill the room a little bit but having obviously the brightest most intense bit of the light closest to right here to mimic the light that would be coming from that lamp right over there that would have been super bright in the shot if i use that as my actual key light so i went ahead and dimmed that thing down quite low so that you could still see that it was on in the shots but it didn't provide enough light at all so that's why i then rigged up this light to be the main key light for all of the couch shots and everything that takes place in the living room here. Pretty much as simple as it gets. And finally, we're gonna talk about the lighting for the kitchen scene, which was, let's pick this up, the main shot. The shot was from here. So basically, shot was looking down that hallway. Over there, the intruder was leaning up against this wall. That is where we use the split diopter. So to light this scene, I initially had the golden needle light in that far corner over here but it was just too bright and too white and it didn't look great. So I actually killed that light and I turned on the light from above my stove actually, which was a bit of a warm light. Didn't add a ton of light. So it had this little bit of warmth and then I just got one of the Godox TL32 lights again on the blue setting and I just quickly put it on the counter over here to shine a little bit of that extra blue light in there to create that dim nighttime type look. So very easy setup. And down there, again, I just had the same main lighting that was like the main key light with the small rig light in that spot over there. So let's talk about the other main piece of equipment that I used for this shoot. And I think it's something you're gonna be interested in. Before I continue, I think it's time for a small ad break, a little ad break. So the clothes you see me wearing here right now, yeah, I'm talking about clothes again. Okay guys, people always say, are you really talking about clothes in a video about filmmaking and about cameras and about content creation? Yeah, I am, because, quote from King's Man, manners maketh man, but I think clothes maketh man. And you wanna look good while you are doing professional things, filmmaking, content creation, all that kind of stuff. If you're going on location with clients, if you're doing YouTube videos, if you're having a meeting, these are things that you have to look professional for and look good with. So it's important to get clothes that you're gonna feel comfortable in, feel confident in, and that are gonna make you look good because all that ties into your professionalism and you just feeling confident. So yes, I'm talking about Cuts Clothing here for a minute, so just hear me out. This new top right over here, as you can see, nice long sleeve top. I don't know about where you are, but it is getting a lot colder here in Canada, here in Ontario, so it's time to switch up from t-shirts to long sleeve tops, hoodies, all that fun stuff. I've been rocking my long sleeve tops all day long now, I've got a ton of them. I got a bunch of different colors because they're pretty much just my essentials. So you just get a few different colors in a similar style top, a couple different pair of pants, and you can just rotate those things out and that's like your essential wardrobe. Cuts allows you to do just that because they have a huge offering of long sleeve tops as well as everything else from hoodies to shorts to t-shirts to pants to outerwear. They've got sweaters, they've got vests, they've got jackets, they've got it all. So as a filmmaker, as a content creator, I'm telling you, these are the most comfortable and the highest quality clothes I've bought. And they do make me, I think, look great when I'm on set, when I'm at work. People always compliment me on that. And that makes me feel good. It makes me feel confident. And that's when I can show up and do my job. No problem. And if you're interested in checking out Cuts Clothing, check out the link in the description down below. You will save 15% off your entire order if you go through that link. Anyway, back to the main topic. Voila, beautiful, right? So this is the Aussie Mega, Aussie Megamon 15, Megamon? Aussie Megamon 15, bit of an odd name, but this is a fantastic tool. So this is a field monitor that you can take with you out and about when you're on the go, if you're doing shoots, productions out in the field, out on location, or even when you're at home doing stuff like this. I use this to film my YouTube videos instead of using the small monitor on my camera. It's a lot bigger, it's got a lot of monitoring tools in it. So you've got like false colors, you've got histograms, all kinds of stuff. You can 
install the LUTs on here as well. So this thing is absolutely fantastic and I've used it a ton so far. Lots of different connections on the back. So this is a professional tool because you could use SDI inputs and outputs on here, as well as HDMI. You can do audio monitoring, the whole shebang. So it can also be powered through DC in, as well as just a regular AC power cord. I think you can also use batteries on this thing. Yeah, duh, right there. This is like a whole V-mount battery system thing on here. So you can go cordless for your power solutions for this if you want to. But this was my saving grace for this whole short film especially because I was acting in it as well as directing it and filming it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a scary villain. Or maybe <laughs> I'm Batman. No. I'm all emo, depressed. Alfred, <laughs> where's my morning tea and my biscuits? <laughs> I couldn't see things probably behind the camera because basically all of my shots, especially the ones I was in, were locked off on a tripod and I couldn't be behind the camera to see it. So yes, I do have a monitor on top of my camera, but again, it's very small and it's hard to see what's in focus. It's hard to see the framing properly. It's hard to see just anything when you're that far away. So I would plug this guy in, connect it to my camera, and I'm seeing the image close to me because it's big and I would physically bring this close to me where I am. So I'd be able to frame myself. I'd be able to make sure I'm in focus. Even if I had to have Kristen adjust the focus for me, I can at least see what was in focus, what was not. So this, I love this thing. This thing's amazing. It's been a long time in the making where I'm talking about this guy. I've had it for a while now, but I really wanted to get some good use out of it and try it out a lot to see if I really do love this tool. Absolutely recommend this, 100%. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out this video. It was a little bit, uh, I think more frantic and all over the place than my usual videos, but I thought it would be fun to just kind of jump in the space where I did film everything and kind of cut back to my BTS footage there instead of doing my typical studio uh, talking head stuff for this video today. So hopefully you liked a little bit of a change in pace here for the way in which we did this video. Um, if you do want to check out the full little two minute short film, we're going to be releasing on Halloween on October 31st at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So make sure you go back and check my channel out on, I think it's Monday, on Halloween uh, to see the full short film. And if it is Halloween today, you're watching this then, Happy Halloween, and if it is past Halloween, well, you know where to find us. The main video is uh, gonna just be sitting on my channel. So, hope you check it out. Hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. This was a fun one to make. And I will catch you next time. See ya.